Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we're going to go over the basic blender setup for this particular section. Now I'm going to have one of these type of videos at the beginning of every section where we're going to change something about blender and if you're watching this on YouTube as part of the free absolute beginners series then this is part of a bigger course and feel free to check it out in the description below. So first of all, let's go ahead and make it easier for me to see and you to see as well. Now there will be some downsides to this as our header bar, for instance, at the top here, notice scripting and compositing and rendering, notice those three. As we turn the screen resolution up, it's going to make it both bigger and easier to read, but it's also gonna push it and hide some of it behind scene. I'll show you about this. So let's go to edit and preferences. Okay, now your window might open up somewhere else if you've been in here before. Let's go all the way up to the top and go to the interface tab. And we can see here resolution scale. So what we need to do is let's say set that at maybe 1.3. That's something that I've always found quite comfortable and also easy for you guys to read, especially if the video starts buffering. Now there are many, many options in Blender Preferences and this video is not going to go into the details of absolutely everything. I'm going to go through more of the areas that I think are important, especially as a beginner. Now if you're on a very high resolution screen, maybe a 4K screen or higher, you may actually want to turn the resolution scale up if you can't see the text easily. And indeed, if you've got razor sharp eyes, why not turn that down and get all the text out of the way? It gives you more working space. Now I can still see that, but I'm not gonna strain my eyes. Now we've set the resolution scale. And as I said, I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything under here. Now, one thing I'll say is we'll keep popping back to the Blender preferences throughout the course as we need to adjust Blender's interface or add an add-on, for instance. And I'll go over at the very end of the lecture for those who want to know how to install an add-on. We'll be doing the screencast keys in this particular instance, but we'll also have a look at that properly as we install other add-ons as we progress through the course. Okay, themes. This is something that many people kind of gloss over. I'm going to stay with the theme you see in front of us here. I'm not going to change it from default. Otherwise, I get far too many questions asking me, what theme are you using? But if you want to change it, this is where you can do it. And I encourage you to try these out, especially if you're brand new to Blender, because you've got no settings to overwrite. If you're brand new to Blender, or indeed this is a new install of Blender, play around. I encourage you to change settings and see what the impact is, because at the very end, I'll show you how to reset everything. Okay, so I'm going to stay as I am. Let's look at the next tab, Viewport. Now, a couple of these, I don't think we're going to actually touch viewport lights, editing or animation. So I'm going to jump over them and keep things default. Add-ons. Now, this is amazing. I'm going to make this full screen for a moment and we can scroll down here. These are all the add-ons that come with Blender. And there are many more that you can get in addition to these ones as well. And we'll turn these on, not all of them, we'll turn some of them on as and when we need them. And the reason for that is it starts to make the Blender interface a little bit noisier. And we want things to be as simple as possible because it can be incredibly overwhelming. I'm sure if you're new to this, you're thinking, what does all of this do? Don't worry, we'll go through it step by step as and when we use it. But that's the point of this course. We're gonna go over pretty much everything Blender has to offer. We may not go deep into every section, but it will give you a great understanding so you can pick up and run with the knowledge you've got. Next, input. Let's make this bigger again. In fact, I won't make it full screen because I want to show you some stuff on Blender as well. So at the top here, emulate number pad. This is brilliant for those with laptops. Oh, look at that. The tooltip even says that. So the one, two, three, um, etc. keys along the top of your keyboard above the letters, you can emulate the number pad. Now, this is really useful if you don't have a number pad. I do, so I will be using mine. If you've got a laptop, chances are that you probably don't have a number pad. Some come with them, some don't. This is a way of quickly moving around the Blender interface, being able to view things from the top, the side, from the left, and we'll get into more of that in a bit. You can also use these gizmos along the side here, which I tend to do on the laptop rather than trying to remap things. Okay, looking further down here, we can also emulate a three button mouse. Again, some people find that really useful if you've got a laptop with just a trackpad. And I would genuinely encourage you to go and get a three button scroll wheel mouse as a bare minimum for using Blender. 
What have we got next? Navigation. Okay, I like having orbit around selection turned on, so I'm going to do that. That means whatever we've got selected, when we move around an object, specifically orbiting, which we'll deal with in a bit. Well, actually, I'll show you now. I'll just move this to one side. This is orbiting. I'm holding down the middle mouse button to do it, or I'm clicking up here and moving this around, this little gimbal. This is orbiting, and when we're orbiting around a selected object, the object is what we're orbiting around. <laughs> yes, whereas if that's not selected, then you'll be orbit around the center point of the viewport, which can be difficult to understand why you can't orbit around something that you have selected, and can be very um, difficult to move around your world, your 3D world. We're not going to change anything extra on here. Key map, we're not going to change anything in here, but if you really want to, you can remap keys within Blender. That can be useful if you've got a very specific task, but each area in Blender, a key may do a different thing depending where you are. So I would not advise changing from default, especially if you're starting out. Okay, we're moving really quickly. We're down to system. So system gives us an idea of how we can set up the actual system itself we've got things like memory and limits we've got render devices at the top here we've got video sequencer what does all this mean well i'll run through this in more detail as we do something but a couple of things that i would suggest are turning your undo steps up as far as it will go so 256 and keeping your memory limit down at zero the only exception to that is you've got limited ram if you've got maybe one or two gigabytes of ram this may make blender slower which is why it's set at 32 to begin with most people with four gigs five gigs five gigs i don't think that's a thing eight gigs etc onwards should be fine to turn that all the way up now, i'm not going to touch any of the other settings down here the video sequencer itself sounds exciting blender does have a video sequencer and we will revisit this later on when we actually start playing with it now one final thing that i have to do i've got a graphics card inside my computer a dedicated graphics card i may actually do a physical video explanation about this shortly but for the moment if you've got a dedicated graphic card in your computer and it's an nvidia graphics card then you'll probably either want to use cuda or if your graphics card supports it, which I think they've rolled out to much earlier ones as well but you can use optics as well now, in general, CUDA and Optics are kind of the same thing. Optics uses the neural engine on these new graphics cards, the 20 and 30 series. And if this sounds like a bit of gobbledygook for you, just reach out. I'll try and help everybody I can. And this final one here, OpenCL, you'll want that for AMD cards. I'm going to turn mine back to Optics and move on to Save and Load. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, I'm going to leave everything at the top here as default. Save versions. Uh, this is or can be confusing when you save a file and then you save again. So on your second save, you'll end up with two files named the same, except one of them will be .blend1. So this will keep counting up. So if I set it to 32, which is the maximum, every time I save, it will save the previous save as one or two or three or four. So you can go back in time. Now, I personally use a source control system to keep all of my models and so I can roll back at any point to any historical version and I give them all a specific name. So I'm going to turn my one of those down to zero. Your recent files, that's just simply what's up here under open recent. Let's bring preferences back up. Auto save, I highly suggest you have this turned on. Um, unless Blender have changed it recently, it doesn't work whilst you're in edit mode, but it will save when you come out of edit mode. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, if I've got that wrong, give us a shout out and let me know. File paths, again, I'm going to leave everything default here. One of the things you may find useful is to change your render output folder to maybe your My Pictures folder, for instance. Then when you render an image, it will output there. For the moment, this is just rendered into a temporary space, and then we get to choose where to render it out. Finally, if we've got save preferences, we've got a button there, we can click it. Perfect. And that's because we've changed things since we've opened up the preferences window. If we click the hamburger next to here, we can see we've got load factory preferences. That will reset everything that I've just changed. So that's useful. You can reset things there. We've got revert to save preferences, which is useful. So if we open up Blender preferences again, change some stuff, we can revert to how it was previously. And we've got save preferences, which is the same as the button there. And I also have auto save preferences turned on, which is really useful because it means that I 
God, it auto-saved, basically. It's a little up arrow here. You have to watch out for these little up arrows in places because they can hide extra things, basically, as we go around Blender. You'll see them. There's one up here at the top corner that hides a sidebar, for instance. We'll discuss more about that in a bit. But I am done with my preferences window now, so I'm going to click the cross and get rid of that. So finally, before we do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and just show you at the top here. Notice we've made the text larger, so now we can't see along here. Well, we can do that and, and fix it in a couple of ways. We can change the size of certain windows. At the top here, we can't because it is literally the top. So we could go ahead and use the scroll wheel on our mouse. Or you can click down with the middle mouse button and drag left and right. That will also shift this top piece all these areas, layout, modeling, sculpting, etc., are different workspaces. We'll go into them as we need to. They're pre set up, but we can set up our own workspaces as well. And generally, I tend to do that because I don't need everything open here, for instance, if I want to change how the object is textured and how it interacts with light. I, I will just do that in the layout mode. I will make my own window. And we can do that up the top here. You see as I'm moving around, my cursor changes to this kind of plus cursor. That means I can generate a new window. I can literally click and drag and boom, it appears. And it's very easy to get yourself in a complete pickle. How do I get rid of these things? Well, go up to the top. So you've got that cross there again. And it works in different places as well on a window. But then when we click that and drag it towards an already open window, that is the same size. So we can't, for instance, or let's press escape there. So that you saw that arrow come up. If I try and drag this down, it says, no, you can't do that. If I try and drag it into a window that's the same size, I can then do that. So that's that one done. Then I'd have to drag down. You can see the arrow there. So that means it's going to be overwritten with the top one. This means it's going to be overwritten with the bottom one. And we can see there's not only a faded arrow over the window, the icon also changes. You'll notice I've got my Windows cursor nice and big as well. So you can follow along with what I'm doing. Finally we can move this one across and we're back to how we were before. We can also drag the area of windows with the double headed arrow. So if you go over any areas, you'll notice I will do this throughout the course. I will make some areas bigger, some areas smaller, depending on what I'm working on at the time. And instead of just kind of pushing the uh, this sidebar all the way over there, for instance, what we can do is make the 3D window maximized. And we could do that in a couple of ways. We can either right click on the header bar and maximize the area. And look at that, we've also got a tool tip, control space bar. So if I'm ever showing anything full screen, so we want to focus on it, control and space, boom, full screen. We've maximized that particular window. Okay, so that's basically it for this video. Now, for those wanting to know how to install an add-on, if you're really eager, and specifically the screencast keys add-on, that will be in a few seconds for everybody else. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so finally, screencast keys. Now, you can skip on to the next video if you're not interested in screencast keys, but I always get asked, how do you get screencast keys? And they do have a benefit to you, the student. Obviously, when I've got them installed, I can see, or you can see, sorry, which keys that I am pressing. However, if you've got them installed and you've got a problem, you can always take a screencast yourself and video what you're doing. And because you've got screencast keys enabled, if you miss click or miss press a couple of keys because there are lots of keystrokes to remember and actually you'll get the knowledge there in your brain and you won't confuse control and alt when you're doing loop cuts and things like that but for the moment if you have this installed you'll be able to also follow along so all we need to do is go to this link which is github.com forward slash nutty forward slash screencast dash keys forward slash releases we're currently on version 3.4 download whatever the latest version is i will often update these you can see this is fully updated for blender 2.91 which is perfect that's where i'm starting in the course and i will upgrade it as and when i need it and then we've got screencast keys zip we just go ahead and download that once it's downloaded, we can go into Blender and install it. And we'll do that in a second. Okay, back over in Blender, we've downloaded our add-on. Let's go to Edit, Preferences, and let's go to Add-ons. At the top here, you can usually search for things, but we've not actually said to Blender where it is. So I'm going to go and click on Install. I'm going to go to my Downloads directory. And here we have screencastkeys.zip. We don't unzip that. We literally da download it and then point Blender at it. 
Now we can put a tick in that box just over here. That will enable it. And over here on the right-hand side, we can see screencast keys. There we go. Perfect. Now, how I brought this panel up, I'll detail this later on, is the N key. And we can also click this little icon here. Now, I'm not showing you which key I'm pressing, which feels bad at first, but I've not turned on screencast keys. This is the reason why I want it on. So I turn on screencast keys and... Oh, spacebar. Look, there's something over here at the bottom left. Yours might appear somewhere else, but bottom left. Okay, so I want things to be bigger. So when I press the spacebar, okay, that's too small. Let's turn the font up. 48, why not? Mouse, let's turn that up a bit bigger as well. Now, where is it on the screen? I actually want mine aligned over here in this corner. So it's a bit more central to the view. And I want it to have five, no, four, total things so if i go and press four different things there we go it's there on the screen of course if i press a, a key that does something it's not going to be there there we go so that looks good to me but i do want it a bit further over so in order to do that we're going to use these offsets i'm going to move that over and when i press spacebar brilliant that's aligned and then i'm going to pull it down to about here excellent finally then so now that i'm using that Oh, it's gone. I don't want it to only appear when the screencast keys are open. Well, let's set it to a window instead or an area. If we set the origin to this area, now we can start moving things. So there's our mouse again, spacebar. This looks great. Now when I press the N key, perfect. That's how I want to see it. That's nice and big for you guys as well. Now I will have to turn that on at the beginning of every session of Blender unless they fix that little quirk that it has. But I want to save this now. I want to save this as my default scene. How do I do that? Well, in order to save something as default, all we need to do is go file, defaults, save startup file. Now, if you want to set everything back to how it was when you first installed Blender, you can use load factory settings. A caveat to that, of course, is if you load factory settings and you've got lots of things installed and set up, this can cause you a bit of a headache in terms of time setting up again. So if you can undo the mistake you made, you can go ahead and just undo it. Otherwise, if you've played around and you don't like what you've managed to do to Blender, then you can load the factory settings. Now, how does this look normally? I don't know. Is it this way? Is it this way? I think it's like this. Something like that. Okay, we go File, Defaults, Save Startup File, Save Startup File. So there's that extra confirmation there. Now when I go File, New, and go to General, uh, Don't Save. Now, screencast keys aren't on. You will have to turn them on. And there we go. We're all ready. Wow, that video was information dense. I hope you've gleaned a lot from it. You've learned a lot and you can put it into practice straight away. Now, if you've liked the video, of course, please give me a like. It helps the algorithm and all that YouTube jazz. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe so you get your notification and ring that bell and all the YouTube good stuff. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.